Is the Bitcoin bull market over or is it just getting started? In today's video, I'm going to dive into the charts, show you what I'm expecting, where my profit targets are, and what I think is going to happen over the next few days and weeks. If it's your first time here, I'm Chris Dunn. I'm known as the world's first Bitcoin trading and investing educator. Been doing Bitcoin videos since the early, early days. And as far as I know, I was the first guy to talk about the fact that Bitcoin trades and market cycles. And so today I'm going to talk about a lot of cycles, some TA, where I think we are in the grand scheme of things. And if you notice, my beard is getting a little bit long. I've been holding out until we break above and stay above all time highs before I shave this thing. And yeah, it's getting a little out of hand. So <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into the charts here. And I've got a lot of notes. But what I want to first start by taking a look at is let's jump here to the 12 month chart. This is the long term price chart of all of Bitcoin's price history. And if we go back to 2017, you can see that this thing has been stair stepping higher following a three bull years followed by a red year for the past several halving cycles. And one thing that we recognized was happening pretty early on in Bitcoin's history was that Bitcoin trades from major areas. It likes to run from open air. And if we zoom in, you can see what I mean by that is price will move very quickly once it gets through a resistance level, consolidate, and then move to the next level. And if you guys have been watching the We Talk Money show, I've been doing a lot of TA and just giving our thoughts on why I thought that we are going to get a new all-time high prior to the halving, which is actually coming up in about a month. So around April 20th is when the halving is going to kick in. And as of today, we're actually still hovering around the all-time high. We actually broke above it for a couple of days, and now we've been pulling back. And a lot of people are asking the question like, okay, what does this mean? Is the bull market over? Or is really, are things just getting started? And I'll just tell you, I think that things are still just getting started. I think we're in what I consider phase two of the market cycle, which is something I came up with in 2017 after the 2013 bubble. And as we were starting to see the second cycle play out in 2016, going into 2017. And I think that's where we are right now. Um, we are ahead of schedule where price is actually much higher than we have been in prior market cycles. We're already at an all-time high, where in the prior two halving cycles, we weren't anywhere close to the all-time high. But let's just talk about expectations. You know, one thing that happened back here in early March when we tested the all-time high is there was a lot of, one, FOMO. I actually did a survey, and over 50% uh, my Twitter followers didn't think that we were going to hit an all-time high this year. And that was actually just a month ago. So I think there's a lot of people that so far have missed out on this rally. And um, I also think that in the short run, there was a lot of euphoria and things just got overheated. And that's why we're seeing the market pull back today and consolidate around this all-time high. And if we go back and actually look at the prior all-time high tests. One thing I'm going to look at is from the 2017 high here around 20 grand, it actually took price about three weeks to break that prior all-time high here in December of 2020. And if you look at this, we actually came up, we tagged the all-time high, got a pullback where price actually dipped in about 48 hours, a little over 15%. And then you can see it took a couple of weeks after that to actually break convincingly above the all-time high. And what we've had so far on this all-time high test is something kind of similar where, you know, price action got up close to the 69K prior all-time high, tagged it, and then had a drop intraday of about 15% or so. And then we had a breakout and then a little bit of a pullback. And you can see from this last pivot low down here around 50K, so far we've made a 38% 
retracement, which is overall just part of a healthy trend. And because we moved so quickly from the 44K zone up to over 70K, you can see the moving averages are still trailing pretty far back here. So the yellow is the 200 period moving average, the orange is the 100, and the blue is the 50. And so the price could actually take quite a while up here to consolidate before breaking higher. And if we go back and look at the earlier all-time high break from 2013, when price broke above 1,000, this actually took much, much longer. If you consider this first attempt here in early January as the all-time high test, it actually took over 100 days before it convincingly broke up above that. And if you look at where price actually broke the all-time high, that was at least 60 days. So call it, you know, two to three months that it took here in 2017. And I actually did a YouTube video right here um, when we started to panic because a lot of people thought that the trend was over and we were on another bubble and price actually pulled back over 30%. In fact, it did it twice from this pivot high it pulled back over 30%. So imagine that. You're back in 2017. For you guys that weren't here, there was a lot of FUD around China banning Bitcoin for the 1500th time. And so people were freaking out about that. And I actually did a video saying, guys, relax. I think things are just getting started. And I share that kind of same sentiment now. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about stock to flow ratio and the ETFs. Um, you know, we all know what's been happening. There have been record inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs, meaning billions and billions of dollars have been flooding into the spot Bitcoin ETFs. And there's just been a lot of hype around that. And we saw real capital flow coming in, which helped push the spot price of Bitcoin up. But markets don't just go straight up, right? They need time to consolidate. And that's what I think we're getting here is a Fibonacci pullback. And for anybody that wants a walkthrough, let me just show you what I've done over the past couple of months and even like the past full year. So we first broke into a bull market back here in January of last year, 2023. And again, that's not my opinion. That is according to TA. When we got above all three moving averages, we made a higher pivot high and higher pivot lows. And wouldn't you know, the exact low in the market was the FTX implosion. Oftentimes when things look their worst, that is the low. I had a buy here around 20K on this pullback where we had the a lot of fear around the banking crisis and scaled out, took some profit. We had a lot of choppiness through the summer. And then once we had a short squeeze and all signs were pointing to a, an all-time high test, I actually bought on this bull flag again and have been holding ever since then. I haven't taken any profit off the table on my Bitcoin positions yet. And also, I got long on Ethereum around this 2,000 to 2,200 resistance break. Um, anticipating a short squeeze. And here we are back to where I took profit in the last cycle above 4,000. So this was a trade that was super profitable. I actually ended up buying my dream house with this trade alone. Um, and here we are back testing that resistance level. But again, just like Bitcoin, it went up almost a double in just a few weeks. And when the market does a move that big, that fast, it typically needs pullbacks. So I'm not surprised to see a pullback. Um, do I think that the bull market is over? I don't think so. Anything could happen, obviously. But I think it's really dangerous to be short when markets have this much capital flowing in. And we've seen a lot of people on crypto Twitter getting publicly wrecked trying to step in front of this train. So Again, what I'm really interested in right now is more bull market setups. So if we get another breakout pattern above this all-time high and we get another retest of 75K where we get what I call the one, two, three, four breakout, I am interested in buying on a breakout where I can set my risk below a higher pivot low. 
Okay, so if that doesn't make sense to you or you're trying to learn more about strategy, like how do you actually trade Bitcoin and crypto, I'm doing a class on Thursday night where I'm going to show you all of the different capital buckets that I use and the trade setups, the strategies. Um, this will be live so you can ask me questions. And I'm going to go into a lot of detail about how I've built wealth over the past almost 11 years now in being a full-time Bitcoin trader. Now, a lot of people want to know, well, Chris, what's your target? You know, and it's kind of funny because I have different targets for different positions and different strategies. But whenever I'm looking at what I think is possible for this year, um, I run a few things. I look at measured moves, Fibonacci extensions, and then market cap valuations. But the problem, whenever you're at a new all-time high, is you never know how high a market can go. And one thing that I've done in the past is I've actually underestimated how high Bitcoin can go. I remember back in like 2015, being in our trading community and joking like, hey, guys, you know, can you imagine if Bitcoin hit $10,000? You know, at the time, that was like a pie in the sky dream. And it happened a lot quicker than we thought. So, um, again, this isn't financial advice, but I'll tell you what I'm expecting, at least what the chart is showing me. So if we take a look at the daily chart right now, it's a big question. Like, is the bull market going to continue or is it over? I don't believe that the bull market is over. In fact, I think it's just getting started. And the two things that I like to look at here is the prior range. So if we look at this all-time high area, call it, you know, 70K, and then we know that 15K was market structure support. It was the low of 2022. And if you run a measurement of this entire range and then do what's called a one-to-one -one stack where you move that on top, you can see that gets us around that 120K zone. Um, and then the other thing that we can do is run a Fibonacci extension. And what I'm going to do is actually run this from the 2020 COVID panic. You can see that if we zoom in here, that was the pivot low where the last market cycles trend really got started. And we just so happened to be in the room buying the hell out of this washout. But what you do is you look at this leg. So from that pivot low to the pivot high minus this retracement, which was a 76%. You can see that came a little over the 78.6% the um, retracement. And if you run an extension, so a Fibonacci extension into the future, you can see there's a confluence level, the 1618 that also lines up at 120. That also happens to be lined up with that measured move. So if this all-time high breaks and continues to run, I expect to get a little bit of a bump at 80K. And then 120 is where I'm planning on scaling out and I'm interested in bull market setups up to that level. And it depends on, you know, if and when, how fast we get to that level. If it just goes parabolic and it rips really quickly, I'm probably going to take more off of the table. If it looks like a healthy trend and things are still intact around that level, I'm probably going to hold for more. And again, all-time high breaks, they're just impossible to know how high price can go. But I can tell you, just based on price action, that's the first area where I think a lot of sellers would come in. Just to, to give you kind of a recap again, I'm still bullish on Bitcoin, but I am absolutely prepared for 30% washouts if that does happen. And I'm also interested in pullbacks and breakouts on altcoins, but something that's been a little bit different for me this market cycle is I've been taking fewer trades with larger position sizes in fewer tickers. So like back in 2017, I would have like dozens and dozens of positions open at one time and um, some smaller position sizes. What I've been doing this market cycle is taking fewer trades holding them for longer and having bigger position sizes. And that just means, you know, kind of where I am in my trading journey and my financial goals, I'm more in compounding and capital preservation mode. You know, I've made millions of dollars in the early days of Bitcoin. And now I'm just looking to compound that portfolio where maybe you're newer and you're looking to hyper grow a smaller portfolio. 
If that's you, I'm going to show you some strategies that I used in the early day um, to do that with Bitcoin and altcoins. So I'll link this up below. Again, that's going to be um, Thursday night, March 21st at 8 p.m. After that, if you're watching this video down the road, I'm, I may have a recording of that class or another opportunity to join a live class, but I've been off of YouTube for several months. I've just been super busy in the wealth building community and trading and traveling. And so it's good to be back. I hope you guys got some value from this video. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you Thursday night and yeah, look forward to seeing you there. Take care.